Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for this opportunity. Several days ago it was announced that the European Union and World Bank located for Armenia approximately 700 million euros. I understand that this is part of a huge project for Eastern European, uh, Eastern Partnership countries. But uh, can we say that this is the indicator that uh, upcoming relations between, for example, European Union and Armenia uh, will get new quality? Indeed, uh, a few days ago, the European Union and the World Bank outlined the big uh, infrastructure program, the so-called TNT program, aimed at improving the communication transportation infrastructure in Eastern Europe. This is a very important initiative uh, which will help to boost economy, which will help to improve uh, the quality of life, uh, which will improve connectivity. Connectivity is one of the strategic objectives of the European Union. We want Eastern Europe, we want the countries of Eastern Europe to be better connected. Uh, and uh, I believe that the implementation of this uh, program will uh, bring real benefits also to Armenia. As you mentioned, uh, this uh, program uh, envisages a very impressive amount of money uh, for projects in Armenia. Let me explain that uh, uh, the projects which were initially identified, I, and I stress initially identified, within TNT program uh, as of uh, priority role, they are determined on the basis of technical criteria. Uh, which means that what uh, decides is uh, the needs of any country, the plans, uh, the fiscal space available, and the maturity of the uh, projects. Uh, there is no political element involved in it. Uh, this uh, roadmap uh, is uh, determined, is uh, decided on the basis of uh, economic, financial and technical criteria. Uh, some of the projects are already being implemented in Armenia. Let me stress that the European Union is providing uh, substantial support to the North-South Corridor. Armenians who travel from Yerevan to Gyumri, they have noticed uh, the EU yellow stars and the Armenian flag from Lanjik to Gyumri. And indeed, the European Union uh, provides more than 10 million euros of grants. And grant is free money plus uh, more than 60 million loans from EIB, European Investment Bank. Uh, the European Union is uh, uh, showing in, in real terms its support to improve the infrastructure, in particular road infrastructure in Armenia. Another ongoing project is the project from Van Azor through Alaverdi to the Georgian border. And again, the uh, disbursed loans already exceeded 30 million euros. Plus comes the grant from the European Union, 5 million, and another important contribution of the European Union. As you know, in the uh, priority list, we have other projects like the construction of the Megri border crossing point. Uh, the European Union already has allocated more than 10 million euros to help Armenia to improve the quality of uh, border uh, management. Armenians are now familiar with Bagrat Ashen, the new infrastructure in Bagrat Ashen in Bavra on the northern border. Uh, now we are moving to the southern border. So uh, I believe that uh, this uh, huge program of connectivity will bring Armenia and the European Union closer together. By the way, uh, why Armenian part of this project is smallest one? As I said, uh, the only criteria of determining uh, the mm, volume of the projects are technical criteria. So, um, 
Uh, I understand that the Armenian side uh, has been in discussions directly with Brussels, uh, indicating their priorities, their expectations. And what we have as a result in this initial outline uh, is the reflection of uh, the expectations of the Armenian side. Mr. Ambassador, let's talk on SEPA uh, ratification process. Should we be afraid on process, uh, on process, I mean in European countries, especially after uh, general elections in European Union, upcoming elections? Uh, I believe that this process of ratification is proceeding uh, quite normally. Uh, quite recently, the United Kingdom ratified SEPA. So we have now uh, 10 countries. So we are moving forward. Normally, uh, the process of ratification takes approximately between two to three years. And uh, so far, we have uh, no reason to feel that uh, this process uh, will be slowed down or in any way complicated by any other factors. Like uh, you mentioned the European elections. I don't see any uh, danger or risk uh, we should instead, uh, here at least in, in Armenia, focus on the implementation of the agreement because 80% of the agreement is already in force. So without losing time for this type of deliberations, uh, we should uh, together, in the spirit of cooperation between the Armenian side and the European side, I believe we should focus on implementing the provisions which are already in force. In your opinion, when this process uh, will uh, be finished? Could you please some kind of, uh, uh, provide some kind of uh, forecast on this? As I said, normally the process of ratification of uh, agreements, uh, bilateral agreements between the European Union and other partners, takes between two to three years. That's the normal pace. Sometimes it can take more time, in particular if uh, there are uh, some complicating factors. And in the past years, there were some agreements which uh, necessitated more time. But I, I don't believe that uh, the agreement with Armenia uh, will uh, face any, say, delays of, of this sort. So we are on a good track, it proceeds uh, normally and let's focus on the implementation of what we have. Mr. Ambassador, does the EU intend uh, to start with the liberation uh, negotiations with Armenia in this year? We have a commitment. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, the agreement, SEPA, contains appropriate provisions and uh, we will be guided by these provisions which say that uh, the uh, visa liberalization dialogue will start in due course provided conditions for uh, safe and uh, well-managed mobility are fulfilled. I understand now the Armenian side is in discussion with a number of European partners to address their concerns and uh, their uh, questions because uh, before we move to the visa liberalization dialogue we need a consensus of all member states. The decision to start a visa liberalization dialogue is a political decision uh, taken by the member states. Uh, the commission, the services of uh, uh, the institutions in Brussels uh, have a positive uh, opinion on the experience of our visa facilitation dialogue and this positive opinion is a necessary prerequisite to move to visa liberalization dialogue. So for the time being this dialogue has not yet started but I understand that the Armenian side is uh, conducting very active uh, lobbying activities because uh, there are concerns. Uh, these concerns are very well known. Uh, the concerns uh, uh, relate to the risks of overstay. And as you know, uh, some countries which have recently 
benefited from visa liberalization uh, have this phenomenon. People go and exceed the allowed stay. This has to be addressed and uh, safeguards to avoid a massive overstay have to be discussed. Uh, there is a problem of uh, asylum seekers and as you know there are thousands of Armenians every year asking for asylum in the EU member states for different reasons. But uh, these questions and there are other questions which I understand that they are uh, now being uh, uh, discussed and clarified uh, in the dialogue between Armenia and uh, some European partners. They have to be addressed, but I'm an optimist because I believe that the European commitment is strong, is valid, and there is no intention to uh, back off uh, from this commitment. But uh, people who are familiar with the migration situation in Europe, I think they will understand that uh, for the European Union it is uh, so important to have all assurances that this uh, uh, mobility will be done in very well-managed conditions. Mr. Ambassador, there was information that the European Union is planning or maybe uh, 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 there was a decision to create some kind of advisory group, EU advisory group for Armenian government. What, government, what can you say on this? As you know, uh, we are discussing with uh, the Armenian partners uh, the implementation of SEPA. The roadmap is being uh, discussed, being analysed in, in Brussels and I believe we can have a quite optimistic view that uh, this process uh, will be done in a dynamic and um, well thought way. Uh, we as the European Union, we offered our support through different means. There is a special uh, SEPA facility which uh, we envisage to support the Armenian government in technical implementation of uh, the agreement. Multi-million facility to support some technical requirements and to support also the expertise necessary. Uh, we are discussing with the Armenian government uh, to support uh, the expertise available for the Armenian government, like experts, uh, experts uh, who would be uh, placed in various Armenian institutions to provide better liaison with the European institutions and to uh, offer the advice on the basis of the experiences of other countries which have done before a similar exercise. So um, uh, we are available, we are ready, but it is a sovereign decision of uh, the Armenian government to what extent they believe uh, such needs for additional resources, additional expertise are necessary. Uh, uh, could you please specify uh, what kind of institutions, for example, Minister of, I, I don't know, uh, Economic Development or, I mean, experts for... You know, uh, when you look at the uh, roadmap prepared by the Armenian government, you will see that uh, SEPA will imply the elaboration, the adoption and the implementation of say hundreds of legal acts starting from laws going down through the implementing instruments. Uh, these laws uh, should reflect the agreed standards and it's a, it's a big work. I can tell you on, on the basis of my experience when Poland was preparing for the uh, harmonization of its legislation with the European acquis, it required terrible effort, terrible effort. Uh, and uh, we are aware of the difficulties. Uh, uh, therefore, we are ready to help. There, there are also you know, additional requirements. Uh, for instance, we are discussing 
uh, with uh, the Armenian side the possibility of the European Union to support the equipment necessary for some of the uh, say institutions uh, like um, institutions uh, which would be in charge of uh, various uh, enforcing various standards, technical standards relating to food safety, consumer pro protection and others. Uh, again, as I said, we are available, we are offering money, we are offering activities like uh, twinnings, tayeks, the, the whole uh, variety, uh, the, the whole gamut of what the European Union has in store. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, let's talk on uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, his process. Uh, we saw very interesting and positive reaction from Ms. Mogherini after uh, Armenian and Azerbaijani foreign ministers meeting in Paris. So, um, should we expect some kind of breakthrough for example, in this year, I mean, in, in, in Karabakh negotiations? Uh, the European Union is a very staunch supporter of, of the peace efforts. As you know, we uh, fully support and we are fully behind the efforts of the Minsk group coaches. Uh, we always uh, provide our support to their initiatives, their efforts. We are, of course, uh, very satisfied with uh, the uh, good atmosphere of the recent contacts uh, between uh, the foreign ministers, but also the leaders. We understand the way is still uh, quite a long one and uh, quite a challenging one. Uh, we are aware how difficult it is to achieve such a breakthrough that you are referring to. Uh, but uh, we have some reasons to feel optimistic. Uh, first of all, the situation on the line of contact has been in recent months quite uh, calm. The number of casualties has been low. Uh, the contacts uh, are proceeding with good pace. Uh, and uh, the chemistry which is uh, uh, being developed in this context gives us uh, reasons to, to feel optimistic. But uh, we will not speculate. We will always support these efforts. Uh, we will encourage, in particular, the parties concerned, directly concerned, to persevere, to continue, to move forward, overcome difficulties, to overcome prejudices. And uh, as uh, Madame Mogherini made clear in her statement, the very fact that uh, the both sides refer to uh, the need to prepare populations for peace is a good sign that uh, both sides started discussing a strategic perspective uh, of uh, moving forward with uh, the peace process. Thank you very much for this interview, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you so much.